Hey y'all, look here. New battery charger. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Welding machine here. Arc Captain. So this feller, uh, feller by the name of Luke got a hold of me. Turns out he's a chief operating officer with this company, Arc Captain, makes these welders. He wanted to know if I wanted to do a review on their MiG-200, and that's this machine we got on the table right here. Now, this Luke uh, with Arc Captain, I don't know if he's as handsome as Luke Duke from the Dukes of Hazard. I don't know if he's Uncle Jed Makes Moonshine. I don't know if he drives a 69RT Dodge Charger with a 383 big block in it and a rebel flag on the roof. That stuff, I don't know. But I'll tell you what I do know. I've been emailing back and forth with this guy, and he's very responsive, which is kind of one of the things, you know, if you start working with somebody, uh, you can tell more than one thing at once. Like you might have a question, you answer, ask him a question because you, you want to know something about whatever. Well, you're finding out two things. Number one, do they answer the question? And number two, do they get back to you? You know, if somebody wants to start working with me and, and, and I'm calling them and they ain't getting back to me or I'm emailing them and they ain't getting back to me, that bugs me. Well, this feller Luke, I can tell you when I get, you know, if I send him an email, he gets me an answer, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. So that I can tell you. Uh, so let's take a look at this weld machine. This is the Arc Captain MiG-200. They're calling it the MiG-200, but it is a multi-process machine. This is a MiG Stig and Tick, a MiG Stig and MiG Stick and Tig. Sorry, uh, <clears throat> MiG Stick and Tig, and there is also an available spool gun for aluminum. And one of the things that seems interesting is they also have uh u-shaped drive rolls that come with this machine um to run aluminum through the gun and if you're skeptical about that you're not alone because i am too but anyway um this is a dual voltage machine so it will run on your regular uh, 120 volt and it comes with this adapter so that you can run it on 220 now obviously you're going to get a lot more power off 220 but uh, it's very nice to have that dual voltage capability here's your your uh, shield gas hose for your MIG but it did not come with a regulator you know you're going to need a, a regulator or a flow meter like this for your for your gas but it did come with it did come with the gas hose comes with your stinger your ground here's the gun i was playing with the gun and one thing i found interesting about the gun is the contact tip is a regular thread righty tighty lefty loosey but the gas diffuser is a left hand thread uh i can kind of see why doing that would make it so that you know you wouldn't accidentally unscrew it when you want to unscrew just the contact tip but be be advised that when the gas diffuser goes in it's a left hand thread uh they were very generous with drive rolls um you know we got uh drive rolls for uh the v drive rolls for solid wire uh, 030, 035, 025. Um, there's actually two sets of V drive rolls. These are the U drive rolls uh, for 030, 040. You could probably run, you could probably run 035 with one of the two of those. These are, the, and it came with this uh, set of gnarled drive rolls. This is what you'd use for flux core wire because they got the gnarlings on them. And on this set of drive rolls, I noticed that uh, it was 
it was written on the drive row in metric. See, on this side you got 0.8, and on this side you got 1.0. And I went ahead and took a Sharpie and wrote it on here in, in, in decimal, so I'd remember uh, 1.0 is 040, and, and 0.8 is 030. Extra contact tips, you got 030, 035, 040. Actually, I think there's a two of the 030s uh, extra gas diffuser extra gas cup so i know i've i've looked at a lot of uh i've looked at a lot of different welder reviews where you know they just set up a lot of plates on the table and and go to welding various things and talk about it i ain't got time for that um, we're going to put this thing to work r right off the bat. Uh, I'll do some stick welding with it first because that's the fastest way to set it up. Um, and if it don't stick weld worth a damn, if I can't run a 7018 with it, I ain't even going to put a spool of wire in it. But uh, we'll do some stick welding with it um, on uh, on a job, you know, if, if it stick welds. We'll put some wire in it. We'll do some MIG welding. We'll do some flux core. And I'll tell you how this works. If, if you want to buy this machine, you can use the promo code NBS Welding. There'll be links in the description to how you can purchase one of these machines. If you use the promo code NBS Welding, you'll get a 5% discount on your purchase, and I'll get credit for it. So that's what's going down on that. So if, if you decide you want to buy one of these machines, uh, use the links in my description. I appreciate that. Uh, and our captain appreciates it. And hopefully this thing is, is uh, you know, the real deal. We'll see what we got with it. You know, if it's no good, it's no good. If it's good, it's good. You know, either way, I'm going to put the thing to work and, and we'll see what it does. Now, there's another thing that Luke sent me here I want to show you. He also sent me one of their welding helmets. So that's going to be another thing that we're going to be checking out. And we'll see how we do with that. Uh, you know, uh, another thing he sent me, is he did send me a... A spool of the Arc Captain flux core wire. So, uh, if I get an instance where flux core would be a good idea, then we'll go with that. I'd say for the jobs I've got piled up that I need to tear into right now, I can probably use at least two or three of the processes uh, of this machine. And we'll get into that and, and see how we get on with it. So let's do it. Got a Griffin dump trailer in here. This belongs to a customer I, I've done some stuff for a while back on this trailer. And uh, what happened was the guy was near here, uh, right up the road actually, and he was getting a load of manure. And right here, this spring shackle uh, broke right off right there and right there. The whole thing, whole thing was broke off, you know. And he stopped here and he's like, man, can you help me out? And I, I said, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's weld that back on there because it ain't no good the way it is. So I welded that back on there. I did that welding with a 7018 rod. And, you know, it was interesting. This guy got a hold of me recently and... Uh, he said, man, there where you fixed that, uh, the other side broke. So look at this. There must be an issue or something, or I don't know what's going on, but this is, this is what the other side done before I fixed it. It was busted off like this, and this poor guy, you know, he, he got a ratchet strap. He's got a ratchet strap in here holding the axle back. So, uh... He got a hold of me, you know, he said, man, you want to do some more work on this thing? It doesn't come apart on me again on the other side. He said, where you fixed it, it was fine, but uh, the other side broke. So, I don't know, man. I, 
I said, yeah, we better fix that. But uh, what he's done is he was saying that there was a lot of slack in a lot of them different suspension parts on that trailer. So I'm not going to get into speculating if he's overloading the thing or if it's not built right, whatever. For whatever reason, you know, he's got, it needs worked on and we're going to work on it. But uh, here, let me show you what he brought me. He bought a whole rebuild kit for this suspension of this trailer. It's got the, the arms, the shackles, uh, new bolts, uh, the whole thing. Now, he said on the shackles, um, unless this hole is wallered out, you don't have to replace the shackle. Now, we're obviously going to replace the shackle that broke. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely replace that. But we're going to... Let's pull the wheels off this thing and look at the whole deal. And uh, we're at least going to get, you know, new bolts and bushings and sleeves and everything. And we're at least going to be replacing that rear shackle right there because that, that ain't no good. And uh, so, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, this is, this is what that looked like when that other one broke like a, the bracket broke it's still welded on there that's what they look like when it breaks the way it breaks from the factory all right then let's have a look see at our current dues nations all right i got the arc captain hood on we're trying that out uh it feels good uh no real complaints so far Replacing this suspension bracket on this dump trailer right here. I've got it jacked up into position. Got the bolt through there just to kind of help hold it where I could use the jack to get it in position. I've got center punch marks on here that I put on there before I cut the other one off. So I know we're in the right place. And I used an angle grinder and cleaned that, uh, cleaned that up there where I'm going to weld it. Uh, got the Arc Captain MiG-200 here. Um, and I hooked up the stick leads for stick welding. So after that, I plugged it in the wall and we're going to power it up. The display comes on, uh, what I would call stick welding. They're calling it MMA, which I think is manual metal arc welding. Uh, I call it stick welding. You call it whatever you want. As long as you get the job done. Uh, we're set on 100 amps. And we're running on 110 volt. Now, I said before, you can hook this up on 220. But, you know, what if you ain't got 220? As far as I'm concerned, if you can't run a good 332 7018 on 110, then we're done with this thing. Uh... It, it 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 it's common for a guy to have a, a 110 volt outlet in his garage. Uh, being able to weld with a 332nd 7018 to do a repair, uh, you know, it's it's an essential thing. So that's where we're going to start. Uh, now I did clean. You want to clean up where you're putting your ground clamp. Take your grinder and clean that up real good. Make sure you get a good ground and. Uh, Let's let's put a 332-7018 in the stinger and we'll uh we'll weld this up, you know, and, and see how this thing does, alright? Let's roll. I'm impressed. That's smooth.
So we'll check out what we did here. I didn't do any power brushing or grinding. Just ran a pass around that with the 332 7018. Try to get a light on that for you. I'm telling you boys, boys and girls, she went right around there. Went right around there and, and, and did a did a fine job. Those rods are not brand new. I've had them rods for a while. But that right there, that's that weld is in there like swimwear. So we got that side welded up, and we're going to do the same thing over here. Uh, and I did it the same way. I got it on there, uh, fit together, and, and I'm using the jack to hold me in position right there. And we're going to weld this side. Now, I moved the machine over and plugged it in over here, and I cleaned another spot for my ground. That's one thing about these smaller machines is, uh, you know, you don't have whole lot of long cords and cables but as far as moving this around guys <laughs> it's feather light piece of cake uh obviously if you're using that as a mig you put a spool in it that's going to put a spool of wire in it. it's going to make it a little heavier but uh no problem to move around at all Just had a thought for here on the inside of this. I'm gonna try and set you up where we can hear it. You know, hear the rod burn. All right, here we go. Smoking hot. So they call this our captain, this MiG 200. Uh, we're going to have to MiG weld with it, see how it does. Um, I got it over here next to a tank, and this is a mixed gas argon CO2. Uh, I'm, I'm still going to try it on the 110 volt. Uh, so we're on. We're on 110 volt here, and I pushed this send button for synergetic or sin, sin, center, it, it sets it for you is what it does when you're on that. And what that means is like, if I'm adjusting this, see this voltage, If I as I go up with the voltage or down with the voltage, it's adjusting the wire speed for me. And so, Let's just see, if I put the voltage on 20, uh, I've got 30 thousandths wire in there. So I'm set on MIG with 30 thousandths wire, and, in, and this is in metric, so the 30 thousandths wire is uh, 0.8. And then I got, I'm set up for mixed gas, and I'm on the SIN, and I'm on 110 volt, so... Let's MIG with the Arc Captain MIG 200 and see if it MIGs.
Now, that's enough of that. She's a sizzler. Let's put that thing to work. That's perfect, because what I got to do next, buddy of mine's got this mower deck, and this part right here is supposed to be connected to the rest of that. So we'll try it, our Captain Mig with the our Captain Hood on. His hood's working out pretty good so far. I like the big lens. I do think that these hoods with the big lens, uh, they're a little heavier probably, slightly heavier. Uh, I do like the big lens though. And uh, so, yeah, that's that mower deck out there would be a good thing to uh, try some of this 30,000 solid wire and mix gas on because, you know, it's going to be thin. It's going to want to burn through. So uh, this would be great. The MIG welder handles that thin metal really good, and we'll see if the R captain handles it or not. Let's do it. They used the power brush on the angle grinder and got all this paint and rust off here, but I don't want to grind on this a whole lot. And really the reason why, for one thing, this, this thing's paper thin. Uh, if I do any grinding on it, you know, I'm going to make it thinner. For another thing, see where I haven't grinded that, it fits together like a puzzle. I know if it fits together like that, that I've got this thing just exactly where it was. See, if I move that, you'll see. See how it's fitting together so perfect? He, you got to watch, I mean, everybody wants to clean up their material, but if you grab a grinder and go grinding, if you could grind that weld bead off there, when this thing's got a hole burned clear through it, or ripped clear out of it, then you got nothing to fill the hole, you know, you've made work. Uh, the weld bead that's on that one piece fills that hole. So I just used a power brush, cleaned it up, puzzle piecing that thing together like that, and now I'm going to take this Arc Captain MiG-200 and I'm going to weld it up and see how this goes. Now, when I did a little test with the MiG, uh, I was on 20 volts. Uh, I set the machine on 20 volts and I was using the Synergetic or whatever it is. It automatically set the wire feed for me. Uh, it's nice that it does that. You know, if you don't MiG weld a lot, you'll really have a hard time getting your balance right between your voltage and your wire speed. Uh, a machine like this that sets your wire speed for you is great. But I did notice when I was on 20 volts, that thing was pretty hot. And I'm plugged into the house current. You know, I'm on a 110 volt uh, outlet over there. So it was impressive how much power I had. And I haven't even plugged this thing into two, two, 240 yet, you know, so... What I did uh, before I start on this mower, I turned that down to 18.5. Now, I may turn it up some, but I think the 20 volts I had it on when I tested it was too hot for this mower deck. So, uh, let's weld on this deck with this thing and see how it does. All right, I want to tell you what just happened. I had that on the 18, 18 and a half volts, 18.5 volts. And I did all that welding on that thing. And I had all my cracks welded up. Everything was going great. It, it really MIG welded that beautifully. Uh, the MIG weld was definitely the right choice for that because that deck is so thin and it's, you know, it's rusted over the years and it's so thin that the MIG uh, really helped me to avoid burning through. Well, after I got it all welded up, I got the bright idea I was going to crank that thing wide open. And when I say wide open, remember, we're on 110 volt. I haven't even plugged this thing into 240 volts yet. We're running on the regular uh, 100, 120 volt outlet. So I went over to the machine and I turned it up as far as it would go. Now, I think it'll go higher when I hook it on 240 volt. But on 120 volt, 20.7 volts is max. 
And I turned it all the way up there on the 20.7 bolt, and I went to welding with it. And I was going to run this great big wide cover pass and just see how it did. It, I don't really need it on there, but I, it's just something I was doing to, to weld with the machine. And I, it tripped the breaker. So that's going to be something that, uh, yeah, I don't know how much you know about electricity. But when you're on 110 volt, the amps are high. If, you, if you're running 15 amps on 110 volt, and you can run that same thing on 240 volt, it'll be like only 7 or 8 amps. Well, when I crank that thing wide open on 120 volt and kick that breaker like that, now, granted, my breakers are probably weak and they've been tripped several times, and every time you trip a breaker, it takes less amps to trip it. Uh, you can get you an outlet set up on 110 volt uh, with a brand new 20 amp breaker and you know you'll have less trouble that way if, if you've got a good setup with a 20 amp breaker right now you'd be good and remember I welded this entire deck on 18 and a half volts and didn't have a bit of trouble it wasn't until I cranked it wide open that it kicked the breaker but I'll tell you what I'm going to do now I'm going to hook this up on 220 and I want to hook it up on the 220 or 240 volt and play with it a little bit while I got the MIG set up. But before I do that, I want to show you what I welded. So I welded this up with the Arc Captain MIG 200, the 30 thousandths wire and the mixed gas argon CO2 blend. And I hit it with the power brush and cleaned it up a little bit. I was on 18 and a half volts really thin old rusty mower deck i'm not going to say that you couldn't stick weld this you could stick weld it but the mig is a big big help on this thin material it's just uh you know it's so clean and you got so much more control now let's uh pick this up and turn it around i'll show you the other side So what I was doing here on the other side where those welds had torn right out, you know, I came in here and welded over the backside after I welded the front. And all of that except for this right here, I did on the 18 and a half volts. I was set on 18 and a half volts and running off the 110 volt current and then i cranked it all the way up and i started cover passing this thing right here with this great big gargantuana godzilla pilot weld i was just trying to pile it on there and i kicked the breaker so i'm gonna hook this thing up on 240 volt and do a little bit more MIG welding on this deck with it. So this is the adapter that came with the with the Arc Captain MIG 200. That's going to allow you to most of the time it's going to allow you to run it on 220 or 240 volt current. And this is a pretty standard 240 outlet plug, uh, like your dryer, your electric dryer might have, or maybe if you got an electric uh, cook stove or or something uh, it would be a, a, a plug like that I'm not going to be able to use that and the reason why all of my 240 volt outlets are uh, a NEMA 1450s and they look like this and the distance between the, the the plugs right here on these is wider uh, than this so that's not going to work for me um, and that's no problem. I made my own adapter uh, to plug and, 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 and plug up, get hooked up, and I've got that on there. Now, as soon as I plug that into that 220, this thing went up to 26 volts. And that's smoking. If it'll do 26 volts, boy, you're talking about 
some serious business there. Hey there, Miss Princess. Miss Princess Diane's checking things out. So that's that. And I might have overdid it a little bit. You know, I probably welded on that maybe more than I needed to. But, you know, I was playing playing with the welder a little bit. And I'm just not one to grab. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, if I'm trying a welder like that, the thought of wasting material by cutting a bunch of plates in little pieces and, and welding them together, I ain't, I ain't down with that. You know, I'd rather be welding on something that's a real thing that you know, we can put some reinforcement on. That thing did a great job there. Uh, and, you know, we went from the 120 volt to the 220 volt. And uh, that, that cured the issue of kicking the breaker. I... I noticed that breaker, uh, the breaker that kicked, if you look at my power box over here. See, I've got a bunch of these newer ones, but the one that kicked is, was one of these. I think it was this one right here. And um, that's an old breaker. So, you know, that's something, I, you know, you'd have to find out. Uh... If you were running one of these at your garage and you wanted to do it on 110 volt, you know, you'd need a good 20 amp breaker, good 20 amp uh, service to run it. And obviously, you know, it'd be better to run it on 220 if you can get hooked up and do that. But it's nice that you can do both, you know, and you'll run into times. I tell you a time that, that I've run into a lot of times is where... Uh, Somebody needs you to go into a kitchen in a uh, like a commercial kitchen where they've got stainless steel sinks and appliances and something needs welded and you know years ago that was all TIG but now you can MIG weld that stuff because if you take a machine like this into a restaurant kitchen with like the O25 uh, solid stainless steel wire and argon gas you know, you could weld on a stainless steel sink or a stainless steel table, uh, dishwasher repair uh, on these commercial dishwashers that are stainless steel. And, you know, that's a place where you're not going to want to, if you can avoid dragging in welding cables from a service unit that's outside, you know, as light as this thing is, you just carry that in there and just plug it in the wall. You know, they're going to have an outlet and, and you could do that. And like we've learned on, even with my old 20 amp breaker here, on 18 and a half volts, I had no problem. I welded and welded and welded. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't trip that breaker until I cranked it wide open. That, you know, that's what kicked the breaker. But uh, welding on something like one of them stainless steel sinks with 025 wire, you know, I'm running 030 wire here. So if you're running O25 wire welding on a stainless steel sink, which is even thinner, you know, you could, you might get by on a 15 amp breaker. Who knows? All right, then. So that's it for the motor deck. We'll see what's next. I had to get some things from the welding supply today. And one of the things I was going to get was aluminum MIG wire. And I needed to get it anyways for my spool gun that I have from a Miller Matic. And it got me thinking about, you know, I said before, I don't want to do some, one of these reviews on the Arc Captain where I'm just cutting plates and welding plates together, you know, like people generally do. I wanted to actually do stuff on a job. Um, but something I thought about, about the aluminum, Arc Captain says that you can put these, uh, U-shaped drive rolls into the machine that are made for aluminum 
and you can run aluminum wire through the gun and an aluminum weld without a spool gun. They do offer a spool gun for the machine, and a spool gun is generally the best way to make weld aluminum. If you don't know what that's all about, what it is is aluminum soft, and it's hard to push through the liner of a gun. So if you've got, you know, a spool gun, that's where the spool is actually on the gun, and the liner's about this long. Spool guns are a pain in the butt because you got the gun in your hand and you're holding the spool. That's why they only have like one or two pound spools in them because uh, you got to have that. You're hefting that that gun with the spool in it. You know, uh, a spool gun is big like this. What we got right here is a, you know, this is a Miller Model 30A spool gun that goes with my Millermatic 252s. So anyway, I was thinking about, like I said, I don't want to just be welding on plates to be welding on them. But here's one thing about this aluminum. If I'm going to try it, I probably ought to go ahead and try it. And the reason why is because I've already run some solid MIG wire through the liner in the, in the gun that came with the ARC Captain. If you do that a lot, you'll eventually get contamination inside of the liner. And that may make, that could cause you a problem if you go and try to run aluminum through it. Because if, if some copper from your solid MIG wire or some steel comes out when you're trying to weld aluminum, that could cause you a problem. So I got to thinking. If, 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 this, if this is even possible, which I'm skeptical as to whether or not, you know, you can use these drive rolls to push this aluminum wire through here. Uh, if it's even possible, I should probably go ahead and try it now before I get a bunch of trash in the liner from using other types of wire. And if it works, see, what I would do is I would probably buy another liner and dedicate one liner just for aluminum. And then when I wasn't doing aluminum, I would take that liner out of the gun and put this liner back in it for steel and whatnot. No sense doing that unless we know if it works or not. So we have to try it. Now, the drive rolls that came with the ARC Captain, that, that ARC Captain says are for aluminum, these U-shaped drive rolls, they have an 030 and an 040. Well, the aluminum wire I generally run is 035. So I set this machine up with the 030 drive roll and 035 wire. I guess I could have used the 035 wire and the 040 drive roll, but this is the way I decided to do it. I've set the machine up with the 030 drive roll and I put 035 wire in it. And here's another thing to, that's worth considering about this setup. I mostly, for the purpose of aluminum welding, I generally use the alloy 4043. Uh, it seems to mix with about everything. Now there's a little stronger, a little stiffer alloy uh, that I can buy spools of easy that's a 5356. And I noticed if you look in the ARC Captain book, in the owner's manual for this machine, when they talk about the aluminum welding part of this running uh, aluminum wire through the gun, they only mention 5356 alloy. That very well may be because you need the stiffer alloy to push that through the gun, and it may not push 4043. Down the road, we might try it, I don't know, but I haven't even tried to give it its best chance of working yet, and I'm going to do that first. So this is the way I've got it set up right now. 5356 alloy, 035 wire. I've put in the, I'm using the 030 drive roll. Because the only choices I've got are 030 or 040 as far as what came with it. As far as the uh, contact tip, I've got the 040 contact tip in here. And I think an 040 or an 035, either one, would work. 
And something that I noticed that I thought was crazy spiffy when I was doing this, I just happened to be uh, looking right here whenever I turn the machine on, and I'm going to turn it on for you right now. They put a light inside of the cabinet so that you can see what you're doing when you're messing with this drive roll. They put a little light inside the cabinet. I mean, I didn't know that was there. That's just, I thought that's kind of spiffy. So before we get a whole lot of, whole lot more welding time on, on the liner that I've got and get it all dirty, I'm going to fit these two pieces of 1 8 inch aluminum plate together. Pretty much I'm going to fit them together like I was war uh, building an aluminum tank because aluminum tanks and aluminum pans is something that, you know, I've, I've done that you need to do here and there. And, you know, my little brake over there, it's covered up, but my brake will bend this 1 8 inch aluminum so you can make little pans and weld the corners of them and whatnot. So what I did... I set this machine up. Now we're on, it's plugged into the 220 volt. I, I selected MIG um, and I selected aluminum MIG, A-L-M-G. And when I did, it automatically went to o, uh, 0.9 wire size. Uh, and I'm on the, the sin, the center, synergistic whatever thing that I can't say that sets your wire speed for you when you set your voltage. And what I noticed is in this mode, 16.5 is the max. And I know that that's, that's uh, kind of low for what the thing will do because in the regular MIG mode, um, Yeah, in the regular MIG mode, plugged into 220 volt, I can turn it all the way up to 26 volts. But I don't know. To start out with, we're gonna try. We're gonna try the 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 setting that that they recommend, and it looks like I can turn it. Obviously, I can go down quite a ways. But if I turn it all the way up. It stops at 16.5. So I'll try that. Let's see what happens. I'm finding this a little bit hard to believe, but I'm seeing it with my own eyes. I just welded that aluminum without a spool gun through that regular gun. Let's take a look at this. This is lumpy and, you know, judging by what I'm seeing here, it's not enough heat. So I don't know, also, you know, we still don't know why it only goes to 16.5. But in that aluminum MIG mode, when I turn it all the way up, it only goes to 16.5. I want to flip this thing just in the regular MIG mode and uh, set it up to go with more heat because I, I need more heat. But the, what I'm amazed about is as far as feeding the wire and pushing it through the gun, it looked like it fed fine. So I'm looking here, if I shut off the sin, you know, that, that allows me now to set this wherever I want. So, you know, if I want to go to, if I want to go to 19,
it looks like the one okay it looks like the 140 is as far as I can go on the speed of the wire which I think uh, I think the speed of the wire I think that's going to be fine but instead of 16.5 Let's go with 18 volts. Let's see what happens there. It looks like I got a little bit here I can weld. I'll have to tap on it and fix that gap, but let's see what happens. What I'm seeing here, you can build an aluminum tank or whatever with that thing. Look at this. This was the piece of the corner I did when I turned it up. And, uh, you know, I kind of finished that off. And I felt like that, that heat was a lot better there. I was a little too cold on some of this. But I ran that inside of here all the way across. I just can't believe, I just can't believe that. I just can't believe I just run. I just run that aluminum wire through that gun, especially a gun that I've already run steel wire through. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm seeing with my own eyes, I'm seeing. And it did it, you know. Uh, it works. That's cool.